So now I um, want to introduce our speaker for today. We have Dr. Sandeepa Gautam. She's a UC Cooperative Extension Area Citrus IPM Advisor serving Fresno, Madera, Tulare, and Kern Counties. And today she's going to be speaking on citrus mealybugs in the San Joaquin Valley. And so now, um, Sandeepa, go ahead and um, you can share your slides. Okay. Thank you, Cyril, once again for that introduction. And um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm excited to talk to you today about mealybugs and citrus. And uh, this is an insect pest that has been around for quite some time, um, always thought to be kept in check by natural enemy population, uh, but that is no longer the case as we continue to hear uh, more reports of infestation from pest control advisors and, and growers asking advice on um, what to do about it. So here I am today talking to you about what we know um, about citrus mealybugs, especially in the context of uh, San Joaquin Valley and what research directions we're taking and how all that plays into working towards integrated pest management for mealybugs. So today's topic is more like a prologue to mealybugs situation in the San Joaquin Valley because there is so much more that we need to understand about this pest that is, um, that is, rising, that is a rising concern. Here is the outline of what I will uh, cover today. Uh, after a little bit of background information on, on mealybugs, we'll talk about life cycle, what life status it has, um, and a little bit about identification. Then we will uh, talk about monitoring, scouting and monitoring for mealybugs, and how all that information plays into informing management decisions. Uh, then we'll touch base a little bit about what we know about seasonal phenology of mealybugs in the context of San Joaquin Valley again. And finally, uh, conclude today's presentation by uh, going over management options that are available. I'll also share with you uh, some research uh, data from our insecticide efficacy trial on uh, mealybugs that we um, did in March and touch base on best management practices for uh, being ahead of uh, this pest. First of all, what are mealybugs? Um, mealybugs are sap-sucking insects that belong to family pseudococcidae, meaning that they don't have armored scales um, like California red scale, their body is soft. Um, and their characteristic feature is that they have distinctly segmented bodies, as you can see in the pictures. And also, uh, many of these species have um, filaments extending from the margins of their body, which are also covered in mealywax. Um, these mealybugs are common species of, species of pests in greenhouses, and you probably are aware of other species of mealybugs, uh, which are becoming increasingly uh, problematic in vineyards and pistachios and whatnot. Um, mealybugs are always found in colonies. Uh, they prefer to live under the dense foliage inside the bark in some, some uh, part of the year, and are cryptic, um, are cryptic in behavior or sneaky pests, therefore are notorious for being hard to monitor and control. In California, um, four species of cit citrus mealybug have been reported from citrus. I took this information from UCIPM guidelines and an article published by Barrett and Lloyd in 1958. Um, both of these uh, resources mentioned that citrus mealybug, which is the photo on the very right, Corner is the most common species of mealybug associated with citrus in California. Other species are scarlet mealybug, Comstock mealybug, and long-tailed mealybug. Uh, long-tailed mealybug has also been uh, one of the PCAs shared some pictures of uh, long-tailed mealybug found in Tulare County um, with me. So these two species are uh, found in um, recent uh, recent years in in citrus in the San Joaquin Valley. Now, when it comes uh, to hosts, mealybugs are one of those species that can feed on pretty much everything. They are very polyphagous. They have been recorded from um, more than 200 host plants. They are often um, species of insects that are found on ornamental shrubs in the landscape, um, are a problem in uh, greenhouses. They are concerning pests in marigold, gardening, and hibiscus plant when it comes to ornamentals. And among fruit crops, citrus is a host, and other uh, fruit crops where mealybug can be economic uh, pests are bananas, cocoa, pineapple, pomegranates, olives, um, grapes, coffee, and potato tubers. 
in some countries where coffee is commercially produced, um, citrus mealybug is one of the uh, key best species of coffee. So uh, what do they do to citrus? They are a uh, hemipteran insect. They suck sap, they extract phloem and reduce plant vigor. They can feed on pretty much all parts of the plant, including twigs, uh, leaves, and fruit. They have been found in branches and trunks, but we don't really uh, know if they can feed from branches and trunks, but they they, they are um, found um, in branches and trunks at some, sometime, some times of the year. On leaves, they cause discoloration um, where they have fed. They usually like feeding um, around, the, around, around the peduncle area. And if they are feeding cluster around the peduncle area, they, then they can cause leaf drop. Up to 80% leaf drop has been reported from citrus in some of the countries where cit citrus mealybug is the economic pest of citrus. Um, on fruit, they cause bleached feeding spots, like you can see in the picture on the bottom left over here, all these bleached spots on the green fruit are as a result of citrus mealybug feeding. And when, as you can see in, in this picture, they like to be, you know, uh, in, in that area where the fruit, fruit is touching each other, they like that clustered area. And they feed around that area and they can cause fruit drop. Because they suck on um, sap, they excrete a lot of honeydew. They produce a cop copious amount of honeydew and sooty mold grows on that honeydew and presence of sooty mold and honeydew could um, reduce the marketability of the fruit, which is indirect damage caused by um, mealybug and citrus. When it comes to distribution, citrus mealybug has been reported to be present pretty much throughout the world. Um, it's a cosmopolitan pest, but it's widely distributed and is economic pest in certain crops like bananas, citrus, um, pomegranates, pineapples in these countries, some countries in um, Africa and Southeast Asia, where they are reported as economic pests and also in citrus. But in the United States, their distribution is pretty localized. It's reported as, a lo as having localized, localized distribution and especially um, pertaining to greenhouse infestation. Now, what about California? Where are they reported and since when? Um, so I did a little bit of research um, on CDFA looking for this information and went to CDFA reports. And based on CDFA reports, what I found was um, in Southern California in Riverside, Ventura, Los Angeles, San Diego counties, it has been reported since early 1900. And in the Central Valley, the most early report uh, was from Kern County in 1989, and in Kings, Fresno, and Tulare County, also in the 1900s, and recently, most recent one from Madera County in 2000. And they have been reported from many other counties in Northern um, California and also uh, in, in the Southern Coast. So they have been around for quite a while. Um, but why we are having uh, this webinar today is because they are now being reported in the last several years um, as a pest from citrus groves by pest control advisors and growers. In the recent years, there, there have been multiple reports from San Joaquin Valley on different citrus varieties, lemons, mandarins, oranges, and grapefruit. Um, as you can see in this picture, the first photo is uh, that of oranges, second is mandarin, and third picture is of the lemons. And as you can see in these pictures, they are usually present in that cluster. They like that area where the fruit is touching each other. And some growers even treated for mealybug in 2021. And compared to 2021, pest advisors report that they're seeing higher incidence of mealybugs in 2022. Um, here are some pictures shared by pest control advisors with me of this year's infestations. And as you can see, this is a pretty heavy infestation of mealybug. So now a million dollar question is, why is mealybug becoming an issue now? Um, it has always been present in this area, but why now is that it is increasing in incidence and in, in pesticide status in recent years? We don't really have a clear understanding of that and a clear answer to that question, but there are several factors that may be contributing to it. Uh, the first factor being loss of chloropyrifos in December, 2020. 
Lorspan uh, was a popular insecticide used to control California red scale, um, usually during this time of the year, early in July. And that to some extent may have helped to keep millibar populations down. Lorspan was also a popular ant control material and ants are known to attend millibar colonies feeding on honeydew and helping them in dispersal and defending against natural enemies. So loss of chlorophyllus may have contributed to loss of material, good material for ant control and also, um, also um, not available for uh, red scale management. The second um, factor could be reduced use of systemic insecticides such as imidacloprid, may be another contributing factor towards rising populations of milliba. Um, third factor, another possible factor is use of broad spectrum insecticide, especially for controlling citrus tree population, which has become increasingly difficult to control, especially in 2021. Um, and many growers relied on using broad spectrum insecticide to bring citrus tree population down. Now that may have affected natural enemy population, uh, which would otherwise control millibugs, leading to resurgence of millibug population. These problems with chemistries combined with the cryptic nature of the pest, um, that it likes to uh, be in that dense foliage area between the cluster of the fruit and easily detect, uh, easily avoid detection, especially in early stages of infestation. And another factor, um, warm winters, meaning less overwintering mortality of eggs and other life stages could in the last several years ha may have contributed to build up of million milliba population. And now in uh, since 2020, 21, we're seeing milliba uh, incidences from many uh, groves here in the San Joaquin Valley. Now, because of the cryptic behavior and clumped spatial, spatial distribution of this pest, it can easily uh, avoid detection, especially in early infestation states. It may be present on one part of the block and it's easy to miss, especially if you're not actively scouting for it because it is one of those pests that usually is present in the inner canopy of the tree. I'll share an incident um, here uh, when I was first um, looking for millibugs out in an orchard in Dainuba, which the PCA had um, told me that they have millibug infestation, I spent about an hour um, going around the block looking from tree to tree without finding a single millibug. Then I gave him a call and I said, I didn't find anything in here. And he told me to go inside the tree canopy, look above my head height. And there they were. That's And that's where they, they are. Usually around this time of the tree, they are inside the tree canopy and usually on the piece of fruit as you can see on the picture on um, left here. Now, once they are in your grove and are somewhat established, they are difficult to control because there are overlapping generations and eggs are somewhat protected within the egg sacs. And um, also these mealybugs have waxy covering, which is usually hydrophobic in, in nature, meaning that it repels water. And insecticides that are used for controlling insects are usually hydrophilic, meaning it, it likes insect, um, it results in water. So combine all these factors combined, the insecticides that are being applied, especially to control thrips and uh, control gradient scale, uh, targeting outer covers may never make any contact with the uh, millibugs. And that again, contributes to um, increasing millibug populations. So that's that's the background on millibugs and some theories about why we may be seeing uh, all these rising incidents of millibug in the recent years. Now, after I joined uh, ANR in July um, last year, I in this position, I was contacted by uh, many PCAs via email, phone, and also uh, during the field days, the discussions were always centered around, we're seeing high millibug populations, um, pretty bad infestation, usually localized, but we don't really know what to do about it. Um, some of the uh, PCAs sprayed for them, but didn't quite get good control. So uh, the big question there was, how do we 
manage them. And we started looking into how much do we really know about mealybugs? And the first step was UCIPM guidelines. And UCIPM guidelines, as you probably have checked, state that mealybugs are a pest that's usually kept in check with natural enemies. Now we know that that's not the case. So we started with what do we know about um, what information do we need and how much do we know about the mealybugs so that we can start working towards building um, integrated pest management for mealybug in Cyprus. The first stop is biology. What do we know about the biology of the pest? How many life stages are there? How do we identify them? Which stages are the moving stages? And how to incorporate that information on decision making? The second stop, how to monitor for them, how to scout for these populations, especially because they are cryptic in nature. Um, and third, what's happening in the field during different months? What do we know about when, how many generations are there of mealybugs, especially in the Central Valley? And um, when are these generations completing development and how we can tie all that information into making educated uh, pest management decisions? And lastly, we, um, also looked at um, some chemical control options for near-term management, which I'm going to share with you in later slides. So let's start with biology. This is from what's published on the literature. Life of a mealybug begins as an egg, egg-laying females, which you can see on a photo on um, top left corner, lay about 600 eggs in a lifetime. These eggs are laid in batches of 500, five to 30 eggs in an egg sac, which is loosely held with the cottony um, silky thread. The eggs are amber, amber yellowish in color and depending on temperature, um, they can hatch within as quickly as in four, um, about four days. It takes longer if the weather is cool. Now, these eggs hatch into crawlers and crawlers are the moving stages. These are the stages that disperse Millibug. Um, it's not very really well known if these crawlers stay that start feeding before they settle, but they move quickly to find a feeding spot and um, start feeding. And it's until they start feeding, they do not develop all these mealywags. It's only after they start feeding, they um, the first thing start um, start developing um, these mealywags covering, which you can see. On a, on a photo here on the left um, bottom. Then they go through molds and mold into a second instar. Until second instar, males and females look the same. And after the second molting, males go through a pupil stage. It starts weaving a cocoon, and a loose cocoon, and spends their time pupating and emerges as, as an adult male, which is a fly, uh, which can fly. Uh, females do not go through complete metamorphosis. It, it has one more in star and then emerges as adult female and the life cycle continues over again. So um, how do we identify citrus mealybug? Diagnostic character for identifying female citrus mealybug. It's, it's really tough to identify a mealybug name for instar, so we focus on identifying female and males. Um, females do not have wings. They are about three millimeter um, in length and half as wide. They have a pinkish body when molted, uh, but then it's after feeding, it's covered in dusted white mealy wax, which appear as uh, dusted in flower. Uh, if you look closely um, using a hand lens, you can see a vertical line that runs through the middle of the body. The antennae of the citrus mealybug female has about eight segments, and oftentimes um, it can it may have an egg sac present under the body or on the side. Um, egg sac is loosely held, white spac um, with amber yellow colored eggs. If you just move it, you can see the eggs inside it. The males complete development and emerge as um, adult males. They have wings. They are narrower and smaller than females. But if we consider wingspan, they are larger in size than 
uh, females. They have about four to five millimeter length wingspan. They are reddish brown in color and young adults can be lighter in color. The two wings have minimal, they only have two wings and with minimal venation and the antennae is hairy. That's how we identify um, citrus mealybug males. Now, uh, moving on to scouting and monitoring for uh, mealybugs. This is uh, very important from pest management perspective to know when the pest is present, uh, where it is present, if it is present or not in order to make management decisions. And there are no simple and effective methods to visually monitor for mealybug as the process can be very time consuming and laborious. Um, Accuracy of sampling depends on population density and distribution, especially because this species tends to have clump distribution in the in initial stages of infestation. But once remember here is that signs of an infestation can be an indicator of active population and always check inner canopy. That's where they are uh, usually present inside the inner canopy. And by this time of the year, they would be uh, on foot. So uh, based on what's available on literature and our observation of uh, several blocks in Tulare uh, County, um, I have put together some bullet points on where uh, to monitor for them during the season. Uh, from March to September, look for white flakes, cottony, cottony silky residues on leaves, fruit trunk, like you can see on the branch over there, um, if the meaty box are present, there would be uh, white silky residues either of the egg sac or of the male cocoon on leaves and fruit and trunk where they may have been present. Um, honeydew and sooty mold is another good indicator of um, mealy bug pop population presence. Usually early in the season, um, they are present in um, dense foliage which has honeydew. Uh, which has sudimol. That's that's where they, we we found them when we we're monitoring them early in this season. And crawlers, adults, and egg sacs can be present between the cluster of the fruits. So when you're out in the field monitoring for, for them, remove uh, you know remove the edge joining fruit, looking for them. To look um, in the cluster, check under the dense foliage. They would usually be present there if they're in um, in your block. Before or at the harvest, same. Um, Similar bullet points, white flakes, cottony, cushion, uh, cottony, silky residues on the trunk are an indicator of mealybug infestation. Um, especially for in February and March, they tend to be on the dense foliage um, and usually the leaves that has some in sooty mold present, that's where we found mealybugs as early as um, in February in the season. Adults and egg sacs can be present on the fruit, especially if it's a navel orange on the navel end of the fruit. They, as you can see in this photo, um, they can be present on the navel end and also on the sepal end under the under the calyxes. Those are some of their favorite areas where they like to um, spend winter. Uh, and at harvest, it's a great idea to um, check bins and look for any signs of mealybug infestation, especially on the sepal or navel end of the fruit. As you can see on this bin, the fruit at the center there has white stuff that's indicator of mealybug infestation um, where the fruit was touching each other and also on the, on the sepal end there. So how do we combine the biology and the movement um, to inform what to do um, regarding management. Let's start with eggs. Eggs, they do not feed. Eggs, they do not move. Um, they are usually near the females. And when it comes to chemical management, eggs are usually protected either under the female. Um, they may be, you know, they, when the female is laying eggs, the body of the female may be half covering that protected egg sac, the, the egg sac. And they are within the egg sac, which is hydro phobic in nature. So chemical applications may be ineffective in making contact with eggs, even though it's an herbicide. But when it comes to biological um, tools, cryptolemus, according to the literature, prefers feeding on egg sacs. So if you're choosing to release uh, cryptolemus 
species, which is commonly known as mealybug destroyer to control mealybug, then it may be a good idea to release them when egg sacs are present. Crawler and first and second, inst first, second and third instar are um, the mobile stages. We don't really know if the crawler starts feeding as soon as it hatches, but it will once it settles, finds a feeding spot, it, it starts feeding, and it is one of the mobile stages. And contact insecticides may be the best option to, to control crawler and um, second and third instars. Adult female. Uh, it's not really well understood if it's feed if it feeds or not. Uh, some literature suggests that once the female goes into egg production, they restrict feeding. They don't feed anymore. They just com complete egg production and then they die at the end of the egg production. Uh, it moves, but it has limited mobility. Um, and chemical management may have little effect on the adult females because of the waxy covering covering um, its body. Although there are several predators and parasites reported uh, from Southern California, we don't really know what um, species of natural enemies are present in the San Joaquin Valley, uh, but biological control could be um, targeted towards controlling adults. Um, when it comes to adult male, uh, they fly, but they don't live for very long. They usually live for uh, at most about three days. Their main job is to emerge, find a female, um, find the third instar and mate. Um, they can be monitored using trap cards. There is a fair amount lure um, and trap card uh, for monitoring minibug population. And mating disruption has the potential to be one of the management tools. Um, until now, there is no mating disruption available for um, citrus minibug. Okay, now um, let's move on to seasonal phenology of citrus mealybug in the San Joaquin Valley. Now we know about biology, we know about how many life stages they have, um, which stages can move, but until we understand what's actually happening out in the field um, and when are these life stages present, it's really tough to make uh, management decisions. So some questions that we want to answer with um, research studies is when and where are they present in a tree? And how are they moving within the tree canopy? Are they moving up? Are they moving inwards or outwards? And you know how are they moving during different times of the year? And how many generations are there in a season? And another question we want to answer is, can we use pheromone traps to monitor males? And how can all that information be tied to understanding how many generations are there in the tree um, in, a, in a year? And um, how are those generations um, laid out, you know, as, as um, the citrus, with the citrus growing season. So um, to understand how are the millibugs moving, especially within the tree canopy, we um, wanted to answer the question that, where is this present, where is this pest present on a tree at the beginning of the season and how are they moving? And to understand that, we uh, used um, double-sided sticky tape to monitor populations because we wanted to find out if they are moving up on the trunk or from outside of the canopy um, into the tree canopy and moving to the other side of the tree from where they are present. So as you can see, indicated by yellow um, arrows here, we have a sticky double-sided sticky tape wrapped around the trunk and um, four inside branches. And these traps were changed weekly since um, second week of February and number of crawlers and adults were counted to determine seasonal population. First month, second month until March, we did not see any, um, we did not find any crawlers. Although we're seeing some um, crawler population, especially first instars, not crawler population, first instars on the leaves, uh, on a tree, on the same trees, uh, where sooty mold was present. That was our indicator to go and find out, okay, this tree has millibug population, but until March, we didn't see anything, but we continued changing the traps quickly, um, weekly, and um, here's what we found. I'm sharing you um, these graphs from four weeks. The first two graphs 
On, on the left side is citrus mealybug corona sticky trap on April 4th. That's when we started noticing them on a sticky trap and the following week. Um, and then the graphs on the right side are mealybug corona sticky trap on 15th of June and on 23rd of June. So first when we started catching them and the re most recent data. What you see here is that on first week of April, we found a lot of prowlers on the trunk. So that's when they started moving up the trunk. And it, if you look at the population proportion here, there were some prowlers that were caught on different branch, you know, tapes that were on different branches, but the majority of the population was on the trunk and it was moving up. A week later, that population structure changed. Now we're starting to see adults in addition to crowlers. So what that is saying to us is that within a period of a week, we started seeing first seeing prowlers and then adults also were caught on the track. Now on June 15, that population proportion pretty much stays the same. We're finding most popular, most mealybugs on the traps, on trunks. So they're definitely moving either from one tree to another or they're down below on the trunk and they're moving up. Uh, but we did see populations on moving um, on branches too, from you know outside canopy, maybe moving into the other side of the tree. And this was true for all branches. It wasn't that mealybug were only present on one side, uh, one direction on a tree. Uh, they seem to be everywhere. Another thing I want to uh, bring it up here that. Um, on the second week of June, most of the population, pretty much all, all the population we caught on traps was adults. And two, a week following that, on June 23, we started seeing prowlers together with uh, adults. Now, looking at the same data from a different perspective, what I did was I combined all the uh, adult and prowler data caught on the traps in different weeks. And this is how the population structure looked like from April to May. We first started seeing crawlers in first week of April. That was our first crawler peak, probably from overwintering eggs and females from the earlier season. Then a week following that, we uh, started seeing first generation of females, which lasted about a couple uh, weeks until the first week of May. In the last week of April, we saw second crawler peak. And that kind of continued through. Uh, second week of May. On the first two weeks of, sorry, uh, first two weeks of June, we started seeing a second generation of female and a third crowler, crowler peak on last week of June. So what we're looking at here is two complete generations of mealybugs from April to June. And there is more coming. Uh, as we continue to monitor those um, trees. Now, another ongoing study, uh, which is a master's thesis research for of a graduate student, Georgina Reyes, uh, where we're monitoring um, male flight using trap cards and pheromone lures in many different plots in um, Tulare and uh, Fresno counties. This is one of those plots where we're monitoring um, male flight using trap cards. We have 10 acre plots and um, we have a trap card at the center of the block. And what we're doing is we're changing those trap cards weekly and counting the number of males trapped on the card. We, this is a trap photo of the trap card um, on the right. What you see on uh, all these little dots over there are minibug males. The, these are small insects with two wings, um, identifying character. Uh, their wings have minimal venation, and they have two filaments coming from their um, last uh, abdominal segment. So after counting all these trap cards for this particular block, what you're looking at here is citrus mealybug males caught for trap during different weeks from February 25 through um, July 14. In block four, we saw first a peak on first week of um, April. On block three and two, 
we did see a little bit what looked like a peak, but on 28th of April. Now that could be because these blocks are situated in a different area, may have different heat units accumulated throughout through this time period, which is why we're seeing a little bit lagging uh, in you know male population uh, peaked in these three different blocks. But when you look at the second second peak, all those peaks coincided right around the second week of June on 16th of June. And on the second week of July, on July, on the trap collected on 17th of uh, 14th of um, July, it looks like we have a third peak. We still have to uh, finish counting the traps collected after that, then we'll know if that's the third peak or we still are getting more uh, more males caught in the trap. Now, overlapping the male flight data and the crowler and adults found on the sticky trap. What we see is the population structure from April to June. First crowler peak, as I said, started emerging in first week of April, probably from the earlier previous season. And we have first male flight peak on uh, second week of April. This is right about the time when we started seeing adults. Um, adult females, which started producing crawlers. We saw a second crawler peak on um, last week, starting from uh, last week of April through May. And then we have a, we have another uh, generation, second generation females from as early as June, which peaked at um, in mid June in the, in this particular block. And uh, on the last week of June, we started seeing crawlers. And uh, we have another male flight on the second week of July. We haven't finished counting data for um, the sticky traps, but we might see another uh, another female um, peak uh, peak in July, right about um, this time. So, how this information is helpful, uh, like any other scale insects, um, suitable scale, California red scale, cotton cushion scale. Scale insects are most susceptible when they are when they're moving, they're mobile, and also in their early life stage when they don't have that protective waxy covering on their body. So if insecticide sprays are to be targeted in this block, it's recommended to target spray applications on either on last week of April and last week. Um, of June or early um, early in July to catch that crawler and first and uh, first in stars. Which brings me to um, the chemical control. Um, we need we started looking at um, efficacy of insecticide resistor for citrus to control mealybug infestation. And here I would like to um, thank both ranches for providing us the block where we could do the trials. Doing a field trial with mealybugs uh, wasn't an easy, um, e easy thing to come by because it's such a sporadic, uh, it's not everywhere yet. Um, so finding a block wa was great and I would like to thank both ranches for that and all the um, agrochemical companies which wanted to, um, with some of the products um, uh, for a screening. So uh, we, in March, we targeted that first prowler that emerged from the earlier season population. So we made our applications on uh, last week of March, on 29th of March to be exact. We screened 13 different materials um, in a randomized complete block design, ran complete randomized, no, completely randomized design with six replication, single tree being a replication. Application was made using a backpack sprayer. Uh, pre-treatment counts were done two weeks prior to application and post-treatment counts were done every week for four weeks. Um, the applications were made using um, high water volume, which is 750 gallons per acre because mealybugs are inter canopy pests and we wanted to reach to them. Um, in addition to using high GPA, um, we also use edge vents and oil um, 0.5%, 1% oil for better coverage. Some, for some of the insecticides like um, Movento low gallon um, 
was used, 125 gallon per acre was used because it works better uh, with a low spray volume. So what, what we're looking at here is number of citrus mealybugs per sample. Now, pretreatment counts are the number of mealybugs um, sampled from leaves infested with sooty mold. Um, early um, when we did the assessments in second week of March. Following the application, when we went out, went to do the assessments for um, insect study efficacy, we didn't find uh, very many mealybugs on the leaves. They had already started moving into the tree canopy, inside the tree canopy. So week second, third, and fourth assessments were actually based on counting number of mealybugs in, that were present inside the tree canopy. During the pretreatment counts, none of the insect, none of the mealybugs were present inside the tree canopy, but in post-treatment counts, um, we counted mealybugs from uh, the interior canopy of the tree. And what you see from these this uh, diagram over here is that all treatments that we tested had significant effect on mealybug population compared to untreated control, especially on first week. Now, starting second week, um, population started to increase in all treatment except for Epidirect, SL, and Safina. Safina, we tested two different um, concentrations of Safina, 14 ounce per acre and 28 ounce per acre. And for some reason, Safina, especially on four week count, did better at a lower rate compared to Safina applied at a higher rate. Now, for all treatment except as a direct SL, um, populations in week two were significantly different than week one, but not different from week two and three populations. Uh, but these all treatments significantly reduced the population compared to untreated control. We did another trial uh, in first week of July targeting that Second, second generation crowded population, and we are making assessments as I um, as I talk. Um, and these results will be shared via article management publication when um, we are done collecting the data. Now, moving to biocontrol, uh, which is another option uh, in a toolbox for controlling mealybugs, as mealybugs are historically known to be controlled by natural enemies. Uh, there are several predators of mealybugs. Mealybug destroyer is very highly rated to be effective um, against mealybug colonies. Brown leswing, green leswing, minded pirate bugs are some of the other uh, predators that are effective against mealybugs. Um, literature reports several pesticide uh, pa uh, parasite species that are present in coastal in Southern California, but we don't really have a good understanding of what species are present in the Central Valley. Um, another point that I wanted to make here is, again, you know, some recommendation based on studies from other countries recommends augmentative release of mealybug destroyer, but this species doesn't tolerate hot temperatures and cold winters, so it's really, uh, we don't really know how it will do under San Joaquin Valley conditions. And also, another important point to remember is that literature suggests that best release time for mealybug destroyer is when oviscacs are present because that uh, feeding on eggs helps um, cryptolemus to produce its own eggs. So it helps in establishing um, the predator, predator population within, uh, within the group. When it comes to managing scale pests, cultural con control also plays uh, an important role, uh, especially because one of the ways that mealybug could be moving around is uh, via pruning equipment, or um, you know, people are move people working in different blocks are moving it unintentionally within their um, within the to on the equipment or on people on their clothes because the Exacts are very, very sticky and it could stick to people. Um, another point is scout the field looking for early signs of infestation if you can catch early populations because um, they like to be clumped in, in an area and 
if that can be caught early in the season or early, early uh, um, in the infestation cycle, then doing spot treatment may help to control um, that particular population. Also, because mealybug, mealybugs um, move from trees, they can crawl, they can move from tree to tree. If the trees are touching each other, pruning trees so that the branches are not touching, opening of the canopy um, to allow for predatory free flow of predators and parasitoids could help control um, mealybugs. Okay, um, we're coming towards the end. Citrus mealybug um, is an increasing concern. I throw a lot of information at you today, but uh, let's tie that together in the context of uh, developing integrated pest management for mealybugs, especially here in the valley. It's an increasing concern in knowing the pest biology and seasonal phenology and when the pests are occurring, how many generations are there, can direct management action. Um, scouting and monitoring uh, for mealybugs is season dependent because they could be present in different parts of the tree during the season. Uh, they're usually on sooty mold infested leaves uh, early in the season in February, March, and then they move into the tree canopy. And by this time of the year, when fruit is developing, they're mostly found on fruits. Um, from what we have observed, there may be four to five complete generations of citrus mealybug in San Joaquin Valley. Um, sanitation may help reduce human mediated transport, and it's always helpful to scalp to determine early signs of infestation, uh, put a trap card to see if you're catching uh, males on the trap card. That could be a telltale that your neighbors may have mealybug infestation and you're catching some of the males flying uh, from there. It's, it's always helpful to see males on the trap and then go uh, check your blocks for crawlers and um, other life stages. And spray when necessary, uh, only when necessary in thorough coverage as mealybug is inside canopy pest. And um, we still need to do some more research um, to see if eating surfactant and uh, oil in the insecticide mixer is going to help increase the efficacy of um, insecticide application. That's for future talk. Uh, I want to leave with these three question, uh, questions as a food for thought because these questions may also answer why we're seeing mealybug population resurgence in the uh, San Joaquin Valley. Why is it spreading? Why is the infestation uh, so serious in the last few years? So the first question is, how does current management practices for two key pests in the San Joaquin Valley, citrus strips and California red scale, affect citrus IPM? Um, from what little we know, now about the phenology of this pest, second generation of crawler activity somewhat overlaps with second generation of red scale in the valley. So maybe uh, using a material that works on both red scale and mealybug could be um, could be a solution. And also, um, citrus strips are key pest would continue to be a, a perennial problem, but choosing softer chemistries that are um, not so hard and beneficial might help retain some of the natural enemies that may be present um, in the valley uh, that would later on in the season help in uh, mealybug management. Which brings me to next uh, my next question. We don't really know what natural enemies are present in the San Joaquin Valley and how that could aid in mealybug control. We are um, doing some samplings and um, trying to figure out what comes out, out of the samples that we um, that we find. We have a lot of sticky traps that we need to read and uh, it would be really um, interesting to see what kind of data we um, collect from that. And another big question, uh, food for thought is based on hot and dry weather conditions in, in summer and early fall and um, Low temperatures during the winters um, will mealybug dis destroy or establish under um, San Joaquin Valley condition. How can we use mealybug destroyer into um, mealybug IPM? And with that, I would like to acknowledge uh, Ping, Kevin, Lauren, and Karina who are with uh, the UCNR uh, working with me, and uh, Pedro and Georgina. 
um, for their help sharing a lot of the pictures that you saw today are from Pedro and Georgina and Blue Trenches for their uh, cooperation, especially on the insecticide efficacy studies and chemical companies for uh, providing the product and um, citrus research support for supporting some of this research. Um, thank you so much for your presentation and for answering all the questions and we appreciate everybody here today. Um, and so I think we're gonna go ahead and close out. So we hope everybody has a great rest of the day and if there's any questions, um, feel free to email us um, later on.